Hello students, welcome to Baiju's classes. Yesterday the Monetary Policy Committee has announced that it will increase the repo rate by 25 basis points. And as a result of this particular announcement, the BSE Sensex, that is the sensitivity index of a Bombay Stock Exchange registered a ending number or a closing number of more than 35,000 points. Now the question arises, what is this Monetary Policy Committee? What is the repo rate? Why did the market favor this particular increase in the repo rate? And what is the meaning of a hawkish or dovish policy that I am pretty sure if you have read the newspapers of today, you would have come across these particular terms. So in this particular short lecture or short discussion, we will discuss all these particular important issues. In the first slide, you can see that the representation of a bank rate, repo rate as well as reverse repo rate have been provided. Now what is the meaning of each of the terms that is a bank rate? It is basically the rate of interest that is charged by RBI on the long term loans that it will be giving to the financial institutions. I will repeat it. The bank rate is nothing but the rate of interest charged by RBI on the long term loans that it will be giving to the financial institutions such as banks. Now what is this meaning of a long term loans? Essentially the time period or the term is more than one year. So this is bank rate. What is repo rate? Repo rate is basically the repurchasing order or it stands for the rate of interest that is charged by RBI on the short term loans that it will be giving to banks. So again what is the meaning of short term loans? That is it has the maturity period of lesser than one year. And what about reverse repo rate? Reverse repo rate is basically nothing but the rate of interest that is charged by the banks on the short term loans that they will be giving to RBI. So to put it in a nutshell, I will repeat the statements again, bank rate, the rate of interest that is charged by RBI on the long term loans so that it will give to the financial institutions such as banks. Repo rate, the rate of interest charged by RBI on the short term loans so that it gives to the banks. And reverse repo rate is the rate of interest that is charged by banks on the short term loans so that they give to RBI. So basically these are the three very important rates in the concept of a monetary policy. Now what is the meaning of a monetary policy? Monetary policy basically refers to the tools that are used by RBI to control or to regulate the flow of the credit in the system. And usually you will see that RBI has been following a concept of a bi-monthly monetary policy. That is the recommendation of a particular committee which basically means once in every two months RBI will come out with a monetary policy announcement. And usually in case of these monetary policy announcements, RBI will be using tools such as bank rate, repo rate, reverse repo rate, SLR, so on and so forth to regulate the flow of the credit in the system. And this particular graph shows you that in the last couple of years, all the three rates that is a bank rate, repo rate as well as a reverse repo rate have remained stable over a period of time. What were the reasons and what is the implication of that we will see in the next slide. But anyways, the RBI announced or the Monetary Policy Committee has announced yesterday that it is going to increase the repo rate by 25 basis points. That is earlier the repo rate was how much? 6%. Now it has been increased by 25 basis points to 6.25%. As a result of this, you can see on the right side, the representation shows that the ending or the intraday sensex has hit over 35,000 points. Now, what is the analysis of this particular announcement of the Monetary Policy Committee? But before that, the composition of a Monetary Policy Committee. Remember this, Monetary Policy Committee has got a composition of six members of which three will be from RBI and three will be the experts who are appointed by Government of India. Now basically in this particular concept of a MPC, RBI governor, right, this is the another very important difference compared to old Monetary Policy Committee. First one is with respect to composition, that is uh, in the new MPC there is a six member representation, in the old MPC there was a five member representation. In the new MPC, the RBI governor will have a casting vote. What do you mean by casting vote? In case of a tie, that is out of six members, three members are saying we want to maintain the same repo rate and other three members are saying we want to increase the repo rate. In this case of a tie, RBI governor will be given one extra vote. This concept is called as a casting vote. Whereas in the old monetary policy committee, RBI governor had a veto power. That is RBI governor, whatever his decision is, will be binding on all the members. That is the basic two important differences between old MPC and the new MPC. 
So what is this uh, implication of uh, increase in the repo rate by 25 basis points? Uh, let's analyze this particular decision of the MPC. First one, repo rate has been increased. And what is repo rate? What is the implication of that? We have already studied in the previous slide. Next, what is the reason why the repo rate has been increased? The Monetary Policy Committee, after deliberating for three continuous days, has come out and said that one of the very important reasons why they have decided to increase the repo rate is because of increasing crude oil prices. That is, in the last couple of months, the crude oil prices has increased from $66 per barrel to $74 per barrel. That is, in terms of percentages, the crude oil prices have increased by more than 12 percentage points. And since a majority of the crude oil in case of India is imported, this particular increase in the crude oil prices will have a greater implication on the market prices which will again lead to what inflationary trends. So keeping in mind this particular point that crude oil prices have increased and there is a very high likelihood that the prices will continuously keep on increasing in this particular financial year, RBI has said that or Monetary Policy Committee has said that they will be increasing the repo rate. Third, headline inflation has been above 4% for the last 6 months. You will come across these two terms and that is headline inflation as well as core inflation. What is the basic difference between headline inflation and core inflation? Whenever we use the term headline inflation, we will consider all the commodities that are there in the basket. That is irrespective of whether it is a commodity whose prices are very volatile in the market or less volatile in the market, we will consider the price increases of all the commodities and will basically use the term headline inflation. Whereas in case of a core inflation, we will not be considering the prices of some of the volatile commodities that is in terms of the prices such as food and fuel. Whenever we calculate inflation rate, not considering the food and fuel commodities, uh, this particular inflation is referred as core inflation. The Monetary Policy Committee, when they explained or when they conducted uh, the press conference, they basically said that, one, the headline inflation in the last six months uh, has always remained more than 4%. Now, what is the importance of this particular 4% number? As per MPFA, that is Monetary Policy Framework Agreement, uh, which has been signed between the Finance Ministry as well as RBI. RBI has been given the duty of maintaining the inflation rate between 4% plus or minus 200 basis points. And what is the meaning of these basis points? Always remember this, 100 basis points is equal to 1%. So, 200 basis points means RBI can allow the inflation rate to increase to maximum of 6% up to 6% or reduce it to a very low level of a minimum right 2 percent that is it will be the ceiling level and this will be the floor level. RBI should not allow this inflation to increase to more than 6 percent and nor allow it to go below 2 percent. This is one of the very important point or crux of uh, the monetary policy framework agreement. You must have also come across the term called as uh, inflation targeting. This concept of inflation targeting is one of the pillars of uh, monetary policy framework agreement. So look at this RBI or monetary policy committee says that uh, the headline inflation has continuously remained more than 4% in the last 6 months as well as the core inflation has been very sticky or very adamant or stubborn in the last couple of months. In this particular scenario, they do not want to allow a credit flow to be higher in the market. So what will RBI do? Increase the repo rate. Right? By how many points? By 25 basis points. Now, what is this implication of these 25 basis points? Basically, follow the argument here. RBI will lend to a bank and the bank will lend to a customer. The customer could be a household, customer could be a company or customer could be anybody else in the market. So basically what is the rate of interest that RBI charges on the loans that it gives to banks that will determine what is the rate of interest that the bank will charge on the customers. Now if RBI increases right, this lending rate by 25 basis points, you can be pretty sure uh, with respect to this implication which leads to what uh, increased lending rate uh, which will lead to higher rate of interest charged by banks uh, on the loans that they give to customers. Uh, this is the implication of increased repo rate uh, and as a result of this particular increased lending rate uh, by banks uh, pretty much assured that uh, the flow of the credit in the system uh, will come down uh, and when the flow of the credit in the system comes down. Uh, Right? It will lead to what a controlling impact uh, or it will lead to controlling the inflation rate. So basically, apart from this, uh, you can see that inflation projections uh, have been revised by RBI. Earlier, for the financial year, 
18 and 19 right look at this particular report for financial year 18 and 19 for the first half RBI predicted that the inflation rate will be somewhere in the range of 4.7 percent to 5.1 percent and for the second half RBI said it will come down to 4.4 percent. Now this particular projections of inflation have been revised by RBI to first half now they are expecting the inflation rate to be between 4.8 percent to 4.9 percent and for the second half they are saying the inflation rate will be somewhere in the range of 4.7 percent. In simple terms you can see that uh, the projection of inflation rate uh, or prospective inflation rate for the second half of financial year 19 has been increased from 4.4 percent to 4.7 percent. Now to control the inflation rate uh, RBI has to be ensuring that the flow of the credit will come down and how does RBI reduce the flow of the credit in the system? Increase the lending rate uh, and that is a precise reason RBI has increased uh, the repo rate uh, by 25 basis points uh, and rest assured uh, this is uh, the kind of a uh, mechanism uh, that RBI will be using to control inflation. What is the inference of this particular increase uh, right in the monetary policy committee announcement? Uh, Let us look at uh, some of these particular inferences. One, it is a very good indicator that uh, in the coming days the inflation rate will be increasing. Second one, the lending rates uh, of uh, various banks uh, will also increase in the subsequent days. Uh, already we have seen in the last couple of days that uh, the Bank of Baroda, Punjab National Bank and various other public sector banks as well as private sector banks have already increased their lending rates. Uh, and this particular increase in the repo rate by 25 basis points uh, will further increase uh, the lending rate by banking sector. And as a result of it, uh, you can expect that the cost of borrowing on loans uh, such as home loans, auto loans, personal loans etc may increase. In simple terms the cost of borrowing means the rate of interest that the bank will be charging on the loan that it gives to customers. In simple terms the rate of interest on consumption loans or consumer loans right will increase and these kind of loans are what home loans, auto loans and personal loans. Having looked at this particular inferences, uh, there are some of the concerns which have been raised by various experts. Uh, I have basically listed out three very important concerns which have been raised. Uh, Let us look at each of these particular concerns. First one, uh, possible impact of MSP hike has not been accounted for. The monetary policy committee has basically said that uh, right now it does not have tools uh, to evaluate what will be the impact of uh, increased MSP on the inflation rate. Uh, now what is this connection between the MSP as well as the inflation rate? Uh, a simple connection is this. The government of India in the recently concluded budget has stated that uh, it will be increasing the MSP to 150 percent uh, of cost of production. Now it is estimated that because of this particular increase in the MSP, the price of uh, rice, uh, wheat etc. will be increasing in the market. And uh, with increase in the market, uh, prices of these particular agriculture commodities, uh, it will also increase the inflation rate. Right now the monetary policy committee has not considered uh, the likely impact of this particular increased prices on the inflation rate. Why? Monetary policy committee says that it does not have the tools uh, or it does not know how to measure this particular impact as of now. That is first one. Second, uh, CII has cautioned against this particular hike uh, or this particular stance of RBI. What is the meaning of this? Uh, basically remember this inflation can happen in the market because of two reasons. Uh, this could be because of uh, supply side factors uh, or demand side factors. Uh, for example, if uh, the labor wages uh, increase or uh, cost of raw materials increase or import cost increase etc. All of this will lead to what uh, inflation because of uh, supply side factors. Uh, in simple terms, the cost of raw material increases as a result of it uh, market price of the commodities will also increase uh, which will lead to what inflation rate in the market. So basically inflation could happen because of supply side factors as well as demand side factors. Uh, demand side factors could be what? Let us assume government of India basically exempts uh, income taxes right or government of India gives you huge amount of subsidies. This will lead to what? Uh, increased aggregate demand in the market uh, as a result of which uh, the market prices of the commodities will increase. So inflation can happen because of supply side factors as well as the demand side factors. Uh, right now RBI by increasing the report uh, has basically right, uh, tried to curtail uh, the demand side factors. Uh, but CII says that uh, inflation that is happening in the market as of now is because of supply side factors. So basically this kind of uh, right controlling measure uh, or trying to control inflation by increasing the repo rate uh, may lead to limiting uh, the growth prospects for Indian economy. This is uh, the worry or the concern which has been raised by CII. And third one is uh, 
the impact of Fed tapering uh, could be expected. Uh, what is Fed tapering? The Federal Reserve of USA will increase their interest rates or uh, Fed Reserve rates uh, which will lead to outflow of uh, foreign portfolio investments from India to USA which will affect uh, the Indian economy. So impact of Fed tapering can also be expected and uh, Fed tapering uh, is expected to happen next week itself. Uh, so basically this is also concern. Uh, with respect to the inflation rate in case of India. So these are some of the inferences as well as the concerns that you can derive out of this particular piece of news. Apart from this, there are two terms, if you have read the newspapers very carefully, there are two terms which will be mentioned. Either they will mention the term hawkish or doish. This is one set of terms and apart from this, they will mention something called as a stance that is neutral stance. Now what is the meaning of this? Let me start with the first one, hawkish or dovish. Simple meaning of hawkish or dovish uh, is this. If uh, the monetary policy committee wants to increase the flow of the money, they will reduce the lending rates. And if they want to control the flow of the money, they will increase the lending rates. If they reduce the lending rates, uh, basically this kind of a monetary policy is called as a dovish monetary policy. And if they are increasing the lending rates, uh, it is generally referred to as a hawkish uh, monetary policy or stance in simple terms. Apart from this, uh, another term is uh, neutral, accommodative or tight, which is also referred to as a uh, cautionary. What is the meaning of each of these particular terms? In today's news newspaper, if you have seen, uh, they have mentioned the term neutral. What is the meaning of the term neutral? Neutral basically means uh, it's a stance or a stand which is taken by RBI or to be more precise, the Monetary Policy Committee, wherein they are saying uh, as per the various or changing macroeconomic policies in the future or in the coming days, uh, either I can uh, shift to increasing uh, the lending rate or I can shift to a stance uh, wherein I will be reducing the lending rate. This particular stance uh, where we increase the lending rates uh, is uh, called as a tightening or cautionary monetary policy or a stance. Uh, and on the other side of the spectrum, uh, if uh, the monetary policy committee takes a stance of accommodative, it simply means uh, it is going to reduce, uh, likely going to reduce uh, the lending rates in the future. This is concept of a stance. Uh, stance in simple terms means uh, what is the likelihood of uh, the monetary policy committee making decisions uh, in terms of uh, increasing or decreasing in the future or in the coming days. Uh, I will repeat it, neutral means I can either increase or decrease the repo rate or other monetary policy tools in the coming days. Accommodative means in the future or in the coming days, I may decide to reduce the lending rate. And third one, tight or cautionary monetary policy stance means in the coming days, there is a likelihood that I may increase the lending rate. So these are some of the issues or some of the concepts that are associated with the decision of the Monetary Policy Committee to increase the repo rate by 25 basis points. Thank you.